Welcome to the Double M Innovations channel. I'm going to show something that I discovered oh, about 30 years ago, but can never really figure out why this something does what it does. In the comments section on one of my antenna array videos, someone asked if I was detecting a current in between the individual antenna wires themselves instead of just between an antenna wire and the ground. Well, no, there was nothing to take notice of. These antenna wires are constructed pretty much the same with a copper wire running through them. But in the past, many years ago, when I had another arrangement set up with dissimilar metals, I was detecting a current in between the antenna wires. What I discovered is that if you take a piece of copper and a piece of zinc, same size, and you place them in an alternating electric field, it will generate an electric current between them. I'm going to demonstrate that using a homemade multi-plate type capacitor that I'll build. They'll just have just a tiny bit of capacitance. I'm not going to use plates though. I'm going to use copper and zinc wire instead. Though you can use copper and zinc plates. I have done that before. But in this one, I'm going to use copper and zinc wire. What I have here is a piece of 3 inch PVC pipe. I have a layer of aluminum tape covered with a layer of packing tape. And I'm going to make a strange capacitor out of this. This will be kind of a small version. But I'm going to go ahead and show something that's kind of interesting. The next thing that I did is I wound coils of wire over the aluminum tape and the packing tape as tight as I could get it. And the wire that I use are two different kinds. This is enameled copper wire, magnet wire, 18 gauge. And this wire here is pure zinc wire, 18 gauge. It's not coated with anything. It's just bare wire. It's kind of like a bifler wound coil, but it's not meant to be like a in magnetic induction coil. It's meant to be a multi-plate capacitor. I didn't have quite enough to cover the whole thing, but I got enough on there to demonstrate the effect that I wanted to show. The final part of the construction is that I put a layer of packing tape over the windings, and then I put another layer of aluminum tape over that, and then finally another layer of packing tape over the aluminum tape just to keep everything insulated. The packing tape is the dielectric of the capacitor and to keep everything insulated from each other. And ran a little contact wire for the outer piece of aluminum tape and this is a contact wire for the inner piece of aluminum tape. There will be the two plates of the capacitor and then I just have the ends of the windings sticking out. And this is a cutaway diagram if you can make it out. These are the capacitor plates. That's those two layers of aluminum tape and these two lines through here are the packing tape to keep these plates insulated from the wires. And then we have the copper and zinc wire evenly dispersed between the two plates. I think that's kind of important so like the copper isn't closer to one plate or the other or the zinc closer. And for the experiment I'm just going to plug this into the wall to get the voltage AC to set up the alternating electric fields and then we'll take a reading across the windings here to see what we're picking up. Well I have the experiment all set up and ready to go. I got the voltage meter set an AC and that's across our windings, our zinc and copper windings on one end and I also got the amp meter set up to test what the current is through this capacitor. These two aluminum layers, the plates of the capacitor, I got it hooked up to our little 
wire contact up and bottom. All I have to do is plug this in and we could take some readings. I got a few live wires here I got to be careful with. Otherwise, this is what's happening now. So we're getting 3.6 volts from the windings on the coil that we just wound the copper between the copper and the zinc we're getting 3.6 volts and this is the current that's taking I don't know if you can see this is microamps you know this is a very small capacitance capacitor so we got 25 microamps and I'm going to show something else here that's pretty interesting I'm going to short out on the other end of these windings I'm just going to short it out so it went to zero, shorted out, but you notice that the current didn't increase. Now if this was acting like a transformer, you think it would start drawing more if it shorted out, but nothing really seems to happen. Actually, well, nothing really happened at all. Now we're back up, voltage is back up across the windings, that's what we're picking up. 3.6 volts. Oh. Well, my meter just timed out. But anyway, that's the experiment that I wanted to show. Uh, well, we'll test what current is I can take off of this uh, winding, too. I'll do that next. In this experiment, now I just have the amp meter connected across the winding, the windings, the copper and zinc windings. And I'll plug this in and see what kind of current we're getting. 2 microamp, two, this is microamps AC, 2.2 microamps, and then you know, we can short out the other side, go to zero, so that's the current that we can pull off. Uh, and remember the cross the capacitor is about 25 microamps, so it wouldn't be a good transformer or anything if that's what it was, but this is just to show what we're pulling off of these windings and short it out again. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm not sure what principle is at work here where you stick to similar metals in an alternating electric field and it generates a current between them. At first I thought maybe it was because of the difference in conductivity of the metals. One was a better conductor than the other. One had greater resistance. But that really didn't seem to be the answer. I'm going to test the resistance on these wires. This would be the zinc. 0.1 maybe. And copper. Zero. 0.1 it looks like. I don't even know how accurate a ohm meter can be when the readings are so low, but there really wasn't much of a difference, a little bit, but I don't know if that'd be enough to make the effect stand out like that. Well, I also tried different metals, and uh, copper and zinc still seem to be the best. I tried like copper and aluminum, and it really didn't have much of an effect with that. And I tried some other things too, like steel, and I even, I tried something like even just solder wire, but zinc and copper seem to be the best one to produce that effect. I still don't know what to make of this. It could be nothing of any value, or it could be the starting point of something. If someone knows the principle behind this, please share that in the comments. And if someone is experimenting and they find different metals that work better, please share that too. I can think of other things I could try with this uh, zinc and copper wire. Maybe add layers to it. But this may not even be the best example. It was just meant for demonstration. So there you have it. Thanks for your time.